I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 307, where I'm going to show you how to fix a pound num error on the internal rate of return function or the XIRR function within Quantrix Modeler. This is in response to a question sent in to me by Dennis. He made my day because he asked me a question about, about Quantrix. You'll make my day too as you ask me questions about Quantrix, but onto the uh, onto the model here. So, uh, what Dennis has here is he has a list of free cash flows. Some of them are positive and some of them are negative. And <clears throat> He has these uh, going, looks by month, looks at by month. And what he wants to do is he wants to get the internal rate of return on this series of cash flows. And in order to do that, he's using the XIRR function within Quantrix. And this is this is a good function to use in, in this case where you have inflows and outflows of cash, some of which are positive, some of which are negative. And even if you had varying dates or or time periods instead of monthly as he's shown here, XIRR would be an optimal formula or function for you to use. But what's happening here is Dennis is going in and he's putting in the values and he's using the correct argument. He's He's got his uh, arguments or parameters correct or the inputs for his function and the values are free cash flows and we can see that that's happening. And then his dates are the dates listed here but when he goes ahead and he executes that or hits enter he gets this pound num and what happens is quantrix goes out and it tries to calculate the internal rate of return and it uses an iterative technique to make this happen and then it starts to kind of create this changing rate starting with a guess and it cycles through the calculation until it's within uh, you know, a very small percentage of what it considers to be accurate. And what it does is it tries to calculate this at least a hundred times in the background. And if it can't calculate an XIRR within a hundred iterations, then what happens is it goes to pound num here. So what needs to happen is there's actually a third element to the XIRR function, and that is a guess. And if you just start with a guess, this will help Quantrix solve it uh, more readily and more easily for you. So in this case, I'm going to say that one, I think, is a good guess. So when I go ahead and I do that, then in, indeed, that helps Quantrix uh, be able to solve the XIRR. If we were to go ahead and maybe put in a different value, like 0.25 as a starting value for us to start for Quantrix to start its calculation from, again, it, it yields the same result. So just putting in a kind of a guess, at least in this case with these numbers, it allows us to, or allows Quantrix to solve rather than, than give us a pound num. So again, this is optional. That's why it's in the square brackets. This guess is optional, but you may need to put it in there and just kind of use your best guess, if you will, in order to get Quantrix to solve the internal rate of return for you. If you have any questions about Quantrix, you know what I want you to do? I want you to reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and ask me your question, and I will try to answer it. I really do love Quantrix. It makes my day uh, because I get to use this software, and I live the dream, at least in part, because I use Quantrix, and I want to help you live the dream with Quantrix too. So I hope you'll join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix, and I want to make you a Quantrix master.